afternoon to you. Thank you for being with us this afternoon. There's still so many people to care for after the floods and the devastation that has hit the province of KwaZulu-Natal. Now, the Deputy Minister of Social Devel Development, Henrietta Bokopane-Zulu, is asking people to remember those living with disabilities. She joins us now. Deputy Minister, good afternoon to you and thank you for your time. How worried are you about people living with disabilities in the aftermath of this catastrophic flood? The truth of the matter is half the time when there are disasters, disabled people are the last people to be remembered. And what you find in KZN, all disability, different disabilities were affected. Um, and it's like a reminder that in all of this, somewhere in that house that fell, there was a disabled child who did not make it alive. Um, there are a, a, a home of totally blind people that got uh, um, flooded and they did not know where to go. Uh, deaf people couldn't ask for help and we lost a few of them. So we're talking about what has happened in the floods in KwaZulu-Natal. It's no longer like we would like to, but it is reality. It's happened. We've lost quite a number of disabled people. Others, their wheelchairs got washed away. The caregivers have to make a choice. Am I dragging this person out or am I saving myself? And that it's very, very painful. Um, is there also a now a longer term problem in that, I mean, you talk about the people who are living in one facility. People will live in special facilities if they're blind, perhaps. Many of those facilities will have been badly damaged. That will have a longer term consequence. That's true. But it also is a, a reminder for ourselves um, to begin to, like, declassify shelters for disabled people. Uh, in, in clustering. So we need to begin the process of independent living. And we know, because we've engaged human settlements, that they do have the money for independent living. So it is now that we will be making sure that as people, as a department that provides services to disabled people, it remains our duty to stand up and make sure that we fight for South Africans with disabilities in KwaZulu-Natal so that they are not forgotten or left out as the disaster resources get allocated. When you talk about independent living, you mean someone who's blind, I presume, say, living on their own. Um, some people may feel that that actually makes them more vulnerable during a disaster like this. No, that's not. Independent living, I mean, I'm a disabled person myself. I'm visually impaired, but I've raised my visually impaired children by myself. Uh, the, the thing is, Steve, if people are not, if people don't understand something, they are obviously scared of it. Actually, independent living is us as disabled people because you do want to, at a particular stage, to have your own children, to have your own family, and you can't, it is not nice for you to be looked after by your family when actually let there be those that can be looked after by the family. But for some of us, we need to be supported. And, and the independent living as a concept, it's just like your estate. And in it, uh, you've got all your physios, you've got all of the support that you would have. Maybe I can compare it to, you know, the fancy retirement villages that people buy up so that when they retire, they go there. It's something like that. All the support is there, but you are able to actually be an adult, and by that way, you are able to also look after yourself. Um, I must just ask about the help that government has been giving, and, and your department, the Department of Social Development, through the South African Social Security Agency. As I understand it, there are food vouchers that have been distributed. What is government doing to help people? Firstly, Every time when a disaster is declared, there is a, a, a requirement that um, from national government, we must redirect the monies to uh, actually provide support uh, to uh, uh, South Africans, but also to non-South Africans, because in a disaster, you can't say, sorry, you're Zimbabwean, you're Namibian, you can't eat. Oh, no, because it's a disaster. Secondly, is that the provincial government needs to have a, a plan uh, on across departments, uh, like uh, when we started, you talked about the Department of Basic Education and the number of 
schools that are damaged. Now, for social development, we will be here at the beginning and we will be there at the end because uh, families have lost their loved ones. I mean, in one family where I went, there's 10 family members and only one survived. All 10 of them has passed on. Uh, we went to Kasbiya, there's five of them uh, that passed on and they only have four bodies. And the body that's missing, it's, it's for a four-year-old uh, child. So there's a lot of pain. So psychosocial support and mental wellness is a service that we must uh, provide. Secondly, um, a social development, we must find alternative because alternative stay for people. Uh, we must provide the social workers to prioritize and work with home affairs because people have lost everything. They've lost their IDs at the moment. Those that have passed on can't be buried because now when they arrive at home affairs, some official tells them, no, sorry, unless you have an ID, we can't issue with a death certificate. So we are taking care of that. Uh, we brought enough trucks of, uh, and mobile uh, we, units for, from home affairs. The clinics are damaged, so the Department of Health must ensure, uh, in particular, labor wards and, and maternity wards and pediatricians, pediatrics are, are very badly damaged in rural areas. And also our responsibility is to work with traditional leaders in rural communities because everybody seems to think uh, it's a green, it's only urban, you know, it's urban itself. We were in Inanda. It's part of Etequini, but it's very poor. Uh, we went to Ilembe in Duetlo. We just came back from Kwatubuza. It's it's devastating. I, I, we went to Port Shepstone. I, it's something I can't even explain, Stephen. Because when you are there, it's something... It's, it, I was saying the news are actually understating. It, it's something I've never thought I would love to see. Sure. Um, one of the issues is that many people who need to get social grants or their vouchers are supposed to have official ID documents. Um, what happens if, they've, if those documents have been lost? Are you working with Home Affairs on that? Yes. Um, a social development, uh, um, we are utilizing uh, the social relief of distress. That's the budget line. And that is why it's called of distress. So it means there are certain criteria that we need to relax so that at least for the first 30 days, we uh, uh, distress means my ID and it's a natural disaster. Uh, my ID has gone and some of the people that lost their IDs are already grant recipients. So we as, as, as SASA, we need to find them because it's Gogo who lost, but Gogo is already getting a, a, a pension. So she must continue to get a pension whether she has an ID or not. It's women who are getting child support grants. They are on the system. So we, we actually are uh, uh, speeding up uh, home affairs because the, the, the biggest issue, it's not even uh, the social grants, to be very honest. Um, people are just at the stage of where do I sleep? Uh, because now my house is gone. You have mothers with two, uh, two, uh, two weeks old babies sitting under a tree and it's raining. It's not like the rain has stopped. It's raining badly. They're not worried about getting a food parcel or getting a food voucher from Sasa. Because if you give people a food voucher that have lost their homes, what must they cook with? Where must they cook? Where are they going to eat even this food? They're more worried to say, where do I hide my head? Where am I going to sleep more than where is the, is the voucher? What am I going to wear? My baby has no nappies, formula milk, bottles. That is the, the priority. People don't have water to drink. But the, the food, it's find a way of delivering cooked meals. But then the cooked meals, how long? But if they were getting an uncooked meal, and, and that is the reality for us, Team Deputy Minister, as we go out and actually witness for ourselves. Yesterday, we dug out a 12-year-old a boy because the one official saw like a shoe and they were like, we think there's somebody there. And we went, we touched the shoe, and indeed it was a person. So we, we, didn't, we couldn't shovel the person. We had to use our hands uh, to, to clear. That is the level that we've been involved. It's 
we've crisscrossed the province and it's yeah a real disaster it's it's such a catastrophe deputy minister i mean do you think there's any more government can do at this stage the president is speaking tonight i don't know if he's going to make an announcement but but is there any more government can do yes there's a lot we can do i mean um we have uh, 35 uh, different departments that can come in i mean people have lost their businesses their containers and small business must make uh, uh, resources available for those small businesses to kickstart. Um, basic education nationally must support because the children must go back to school. I mean, COVID has made them lose uh, so much. We need to get children their uniforms because and books back because they've lost everything. Um, they only have in the clothes that they are wearing. So in the past four or five days, children have not been able to change their clothes because that's the only clothes they are left with. So, it, yeah, they, they, people don't have uh, blankets. So there's a lot um, that government can do. The tourism sector, hotels are flooded. So the Department of Tourism must make money available and support the province. But also there are departments that don't have a provincial arm, that are national uh, arms, your defense force, your... Um, SASA, those are national mandates. So we now need to make sure that they actually uh, are available in districts, are available locally for people to be able to access uh, some service. But there's a lot that government can still do. Deputy Minister, I really appreciate the time, ma'am. Thank you. Henrietta Bogopane Zulu, the Deputy Minister of Social Development there. Don't